Welcome to Final Color Training. I'm Kevin Shaw. Let's look at node opacity. I'll start with the basics, but after a few minutes, I'll show you four really neat tricks that I use all the time. Here's a shot from a red camera, and here's a simple warm look in a separate node. As I keep pushing it, I eventually go too far. So instead of undoing the grade, I open the node key palette, and I use key output gain to reduce the strength of the node. Remember the white parts of the mat or alpha channel are 100% affected by this node. We use gain to darken the whites and reduce the node opacity. If I go all the way to black, I've essentially bypassed the node. It's not called opacity in Resolve, but I will use that term from now on. The nice thing about opacity is you can do this in pretty much any color corrector. So let's adjust to where it looks nice. Great. Now here's a sky grad I did earlier. When we go to the node key palette, I can see the matte. White in the sky with the look grade applied and black in the foreground, which is transparent. Now I can use gain to lower the whites of the matte and offset to lift the blacks. Gain and offset are just like the gain and offset in the primaries, but here they're applied to the black and white matte. The gain reduces my sky grad but sometimes we get a better result if we apply a little of the sky grade to the foreground. It brings the two closer together. Here I offset the black of the mat and get more contrast and color in the foreground, allowing me to keep that beautiful sky without it looking weird in the foreground. And I can just play with these two values to make the shot work. Power trick one, opacity gain and offset mix in and out of the mat. Nice, but my client isn't happy. So I did another version, this time with a gold grad, and I used a curve window this time instead of the grad. But what happens if I want to transition between the two? I hate doing lots and lots of keyframes and remembering what I did. So I always do the transition in a separate node and I only keyframe the opacity value. So I choose the blue grad, Right click display node graph, then I drag the blue grad node onto the connection of the gold grad in my grade. I don't need the wipe, so let's cancel that. I couldn't keyframe this in the normal way, even if I wanted to, because power window types are switches. They can go on and off, but they can't morph into each other, not easily anyway. Also, I don't want the colors to rotate around the hue wheel. I want them to go straight from the blue to the gold. So I'm going to use opacity to dial one node down and the next one up. I want to start without any gold, so I go to the gold node, set the opacity to zero. I'm happy with this as my starting point, so I find the first frame of my dynamic, select the blue node, turn on the auto keyframe, and just nudge the opacity to get a keyframe. Actually, if I nudge it too much, it's not a problem because I can undo the correction and the keyframe will stay there. Now, find the end of the blue transition and set the blue node opacity to zero. Now we have no sky grad and no gold grad. Next, select the gold node and find the frame where we want that transition to start coming in. Enable auto keyframe, nudge opacity, go to the end of the transition and reset the opacity. So that looks quite good, but I really liked that mix of both the gold and the blue together. So let's turn off the auto keyframe. I don't need any more keyframes. Go back to the blue grad and just pull the opacity back up a little bit to get more contrast in the sky. Once I'm happy, I can just play it back to see the transition. So power trick two, opacity simplifies keyframing, even making switch functions dynamic. Here's another shot and I want to apply a bleach bypass look. I'm gonna do that by clicking on one of my power grades. Opacity is useful here because this is actually a compound node. It's made up of three nodes, including a layer mixer. Now individual opacity on each of these nodes is not really useful. I have selected the three nodes, right click, make compound node, and then added it to my power grade library. Now I can turn this look off and on at will, 
quite easily just by clicking on the compound node title. And I can also vary the strength with the compound node opacity. So power trick number three, make compound nodes so that you have one opacity controlling the entire look. I have one more power trick and probably my favorite of all. Suppose I'm just beginning to create the look. Before I do anything, I want to go to the node opacity and set it to about 0.7 or 0.8. It doesn't change the picture because I haven't done anything in that node yet. Now I'll create a very simple bleach effect. Um, let's use some curves, luminance, uh, a little bit of gain and contrast. And I'll finish with some sharpening. Okay, here's my look. Now, very often what happens is the client then says, oh, maybe you should go a little bit further. But because I set the opacity to 0.7, I can now use opacity to go both more and less. That's huge. A real time saver and a great client pleaser. So power trick number four, preset the opacity before you start creating a look so that you can then use opacity to go both more or less once you've got the look sorted. That's it for this time. Don't forget to check out my classes. I hope to see you sometime soon and happy coloring.